Assembly of God to come up to the podium and lead us in prayer tonight. If everyone can stand. <coughs> Gracious Lord, we come to you tonight loving on you, glorifying you, lifting you up. We praise you for your blessings upon our city. We ask your blessings upon our city council, our leaders, our mayors. Father, bless their families and their homes with the sacrifice that they make for our great city. We ask your blessing upon all of these. We ask you, Lord, to lead us and guide us tonight as we do business and enact commerce in the city. We ask every pastor and every church that they would have a move of God in this great city of Cleveland. Bless this people gathered here tonight. Lead us and guide us, and you be glorified in everything we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One All right, so the first item on our agenda is to issue the certificate of election to the mayor, Richard Boyette, council position one, Carolyn McWaters, and council position two, Marilyn Clay. We had an uncontested election, so um, we did not have to hold one. So this will be where we're um, providing them certificate of election. And as soon as the mayor signs them, I will be able to pass them out. And then we'll go to number two, which is administering the oath. Our oath will be uh, presented tonight by Judge Ralph Fuller. Judge Fuller, if you'll come forward. And we'll do them in order as on the uh, agenda. Uh, Mayor, if you would please step forward. <laughs> uh, oh, Ralph, I did this once. I did Ralph. I told him he was going to do me. That's right. That's right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Right. Say that to me. I, Richard Boyer, I, Richard Boyer, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of the duties and office of mayor of the city of Cleveland, mayor of the city of Cleveland, of the state of Texas, of the state of Texas, and will to the best of my ability and will to the best of my ability preserve, preserve, protect, protect, and defend and defend the constitution and laws, the constitution and laws of the United States, of the United States, and of this state, and of this state, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Appreciate it. Council position one, Carolyn McWaters. If you'll please come forward. I, Carolyn McWaters, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of council member of the city of Cleveland. Member of the city of Cleveland, of the state of Texas, of the state of Texas, and will to the best of my ability, and will to the best of my ability, preserve, preserve, protect, protect, and defend, and defend the Constitution and laws, the Constitution and laws of the United States, of the United States, and of this state, and of this state. Let's so <laughs> Our third will be Council Position 2, 
Marilyn Place. I, Marilyn Clay. I, Marilyn Clay. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. <laughs> execute the duties. Execute the duties. Of the office of. Of the office of. Council member of council, the city of Cleveland. Council member of the city of Cleveland. Of the state of Texas. Of the state of Texas. And will do the best of my ability. And will do to the best of my ability. Preserve. Preserve. Protect. Protect. And defend and defend the constitution and laws and the constitution of laws of the United States of the United States and of this state and of this state. So there we go. So happy God. <laughs> Space apart over here, some of them over here. There you go. Good job. I know what I'm doing. Oh, you want to go to a district? Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to get over there? Yeah. Well, yes. Okay. That's a good one. You ready? Thank you. Just a journey going on. <laughs> 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 yeah. We'll let the roll call so that all the counties are present. Okay, we're opening on a public hearing. Council, this public hearing is a CDPG comprehensive project in 2019. The city applied and received a grant for planning capacity building comprehensive plan. And HR Green was chosen to create the plan. This public hearing is to discuss the proposed comprehensive planning documents and solicit citizen input on this project. No action will be taken during the public hearing. I just I do I want to make it a comment from staff that every great city has a comp plan and this is our roadmap uh, for the next 20 to 30 years and uh, it's it's important to have uh, a plan on paper uh, in this current council staff has started uh, working on the items within this document so uh, Rebecca is here. Rebecca, I don't know if you'd like to make a comment about the public hearing. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to make a comment about the public hearing. <laughs> I'll run over here and say, um, I, I don't need to make a comment about the public hearing. I, I am going to be presenting during the meeting um, about the plan, just kind of the general. And you guys are going to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, you're fine. <laughs> Do we have anyone here that would like to address the public? Do we have anyone that wants to talk about this particular item on the agenda? Zoom. 
Is there anybody on Zoom? Uh, please unmute yourself or use the chat feature if you'd like to just talk during the public hearing on the comprehensive plan. Nobody wants to say anything about it. Okay. We must be doing good. Okay, I close the public hearing. Okay, we're opening another public hearing. This is to discuss um, the proposed partial street closure request from Liberty Church on a portion of Page Street off FM 2025. Anyone in the audience have a Come on, uh, we live on Cedar Street, right behind there. Uh, that that street's pretty small, and it's going to create a lot more traffic to our area. Um, I encourage everyone before you vote to drive down Cedar before you do, and so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, it's not it's not conducive for extra traffic. Okay. But you know what, what we're talking about? The yes. Closure of part, 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 yes. part of that street. So, there, right? um, you're going to close the paint here and have it come in from 59 down Cedar, right? And all that traffic that people are trying to avoid, uh, the bridge and all that, are going to come down Cedar Street. So, that's that's my. Where do you live, sir? I mean, on Cedar. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, we have some other people here that live on Cedar, too. If they would like to. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Sir, may I have your name for the record, please? My name is Brad Morris. Brad Morris, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If you'll just state your name before speaking. Thank you. My name is Santana Herrera. I live in Cedar Street, a street, and it's very dangerous. 2025 20, in Cedar. I mean, if you, I mean, I don't have access to records, but I see a lot of accidents on that street. So if y'all can check the records, I mean, you, you will know it's a very dangerous curve. And if somebody comes from 2025 to Cedar, I mean, it's going to give even more accidents. For a lot of our family, we try to, to pay to avoid Cedar in 2025. So it's, this is, it's not going to be a good thing. I mean, it may be better for the church, but not for us. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Just come up and just, you don't have to say a little lot. Just feel yeah. free to speak your what you're here for. Uh, hello, um, my name is Francisca. And I don't know all the lines to the street to be closed because it's going to be really dangerous for us for, for the cars passing by because we have children playing around the street and it's going to cause a lot of danger to our children and to our families. Is there anybody on Zoom that would like to speak uh, during the public hearing on the partial street closure for Pate Street? If so, please unmute yourself or use the chat feature. I'm Robert Harris with Liberty Church. And while I do understand the, the concerns about the safety of the, the street itself, I, I ask, like you, Mr. Pennington was, was stating earlier, the long-term view of what we're trying to do here and the way that we're trying to expand the church to, to be able to involve more of the community. While I can see where there may be some initial concerns, I think that those can be sorted through widening the roads and there can be safety precautions taken to the small strip of space that we're, we're asking to utilize. We own both sides of the street, and we would be, like to be able to expand what we have with the church to be able to further do things with the community and all the children within the community where our hearts are. So, this is not, I, I, 
our listeners are here understand what they're saying is not so we want to put children in danger. We have a vision for these children to be able to further expand within that. So I, I urge you, I, I do consider what they said, but I urge you to, to understand what we're trying to do in the vision that, that we have for, for the church and this community. The fact that <clears throat> as things expand, I work in the city limits of Houston and I, I, I drive it every day. Um, I see where, where we expanded and expanded and expanded, and it's just going further north. 2025, that area, even further north is the next to come. And we want to, to be ahead of that and to grow with this city and, and, and what's, what's become of that. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. We talk about it. Anyone else with the Liberty Christian? My name is Preston Bostwick. I'm the senior, one of the senior pastors there at the church. And I just I do hear the concerns of the safety of the other street of Cedar. I don't know if they are aware of your plans for the, the bypass that is going to go in just north of that street that will eventually saw a lot of the, the cross between theater and 2025. Um, and it is a very tight street. I've driven down it. Um, trying to come out on 2025 at Pate and at Cedar is, is very dangerous with the current uh, speed limit. I think you, one of you said to, uh, said to me that that will be under review to decrease the speed limit on 2025. But I think as you guys have, have been planning ahead for traffic flow in that area. Um, the span of time between the potential closure of that street and any increased uh, traffic on Cedar, it, it is a tight street. So I think as people start to try to make an alternate choice for traffic, that they will be frustrated by trying to make that because you make them two turns. Um, to try to get over to 2025. They use paper because it's just a straight shot. They can speed down that road, and I've seen it happen. Um, but there are alternates, both now and in the future, uh, for traffic flow. Richard, do you know this red and orange? Have you all spoken about this? No, sir. Have you reached out to any of the people? Yeah, it's a problem here. Well, you don't have to be a problem. You have the item on the agenda that you have. Just fill in anybody else that they have uh, would like to see. Can I say one more thing? I got to just, I encourage you to drive. Go to the theater, everybody. Just go down to the theater and see what I'm talking about. You've got to ask me. Come on, Brandon. I'm free to white with Liberty Church. Um, I've driven down that road more times than I can remember, and I'm busy. So, um, my mother used to live in Tanglewood and on Dark Street, and so I did everything I could to wiggle around. And um, the curve they talk about. Is right where we want that curve. And there has been more accidents in the curve at 2025 and the road that we would like closed than I have seen in it. And the real problem is people driving way too fast from Cold Springs into town. And if we could put up speed limits, I mean, I even talked to the chief one time about could we get a traffic light? Because they just come booking it down there. And when you're at that curve, I mean, the screeching tires and the accidents and vehicles that have been in the ditch are incredible. So I think it will it will be a little bit of an inconvenience, perhaps. But we own both sides of the road. And for us to be able to utilize our property, the city made us put in that drainage. And that took up a lot of our property. And so we're just trying to do the best we can with what we've got. 
Now, can we just clarify? Okay, all the people that we be in Cedar Street, we've been there more than 20 years. It's not the same if you just a neighbor around. You, I mean, we get to see people getting hurt on that third theater in 2025. We have to see a lot. We haven't seen nothing on page. It's usually a theater in 2025. If you check your records, I'm sure somebody here can have access. You would know what I'm talking about. The crazy thing about it, a lot of us have teenagers, kids that starting to drive and they use hate speech to this day. And as a parent, it's better for me for my kids to drive hate than Peter. So if y'all live there, we do. So we think it's a bad idea. I mean, I understand they knew when they bought the, the property that it was a street. I mean, in all of us, we live there and we use that street. And it's, it's not good. It's not going to be good for nobody, not for the city, not for whoever tried to use it. What, what's your address, Brown Street? 600 Cedar. I live right there. We see, and they live right in front of me. We go and we see all the accidents all the time, no matter the time. He's right though, there's a lot of speeders going down that way. Yeah, that's Anyone else? If, if I just want to clarify, I, I have been in Cedar Street, okay. and just want to clarify how many residents are on that street. I know I saw a tree. Yeah. Be yeah we'll, we'll handle that during the action. I'm purely from the position to hear them. We'll get to the And another point that I, I wanted to make though, but if we had a visual, uh, the view of what everybody's trying to explain, we would be able to see, everybody would be able to understand and see what everybody's talking about. Jennifer, if you'll pull up the public hearing notice that we have, I believe it has a map. Steady no, hearing. No, sir. That's just giving a visual. Um, Councilman Franklin asked about taking action. That's just giving a visual during the public hearing, and that's okay, correct, Mr. Olson? Fine. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Pretty, did you say that people try to, to the trucks try to turn around there on the from the love. Yeah, okay. Again, I'm going to go back to the town. This is fine. We're going to paint this dialogue. I've asked Senator for the full Google Maps. I, I, I know that there's a map in there. It's a little clearer. So what we can see, and then you can actually see the houses that are located there on, uh, on Cedar Street. No, I have driven it. It's very tight. It's just a Yeah, there is there's no uh hitch or there's there's no testing that there the increased traffic would would uh would be an inconvenience, but just to address the, the lady's concern for safety for her future kids driving. We are not closing all of Pate Street. They would still have access to their home um, via Pate Street on the Cedar Street and that movement uh, onto the theater. Okay. Anyone else with any more comment? Anyone else? Okay, I'm declaring the public hearing closed. We're not going to be on this tonight. I got to say, drive it, drive it. All right. This is where it's called when you're going to be riding on the street. You can't find it right on the street. So we see all the accidents that happen right here. 
smooth sailing on the parking lot. So I really think it would slow people down. The issue is the speed limit and the dangerous curve. And so if, and if the school district does what they're planning to do, then that will all alleviate that traffic where you can access 59 and not have to come down 2025 and go across the bridge and sit for a half hour. So you know, I think we all understand mm -hmm. the width of that street, but no, um, no, no. what will happen, what is happening is yeah, I mean, that 18 wheeler missed it and took out our power pole in the curve, ended up in the ditch at the church. So, you know, it's ongoing because they're going way too fast for that area. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Horn. Richard Horn, I was going to tell you, you know we're trying to think Go out there before that station is. Sure. We're trying trying to make that go from 2025 exit to 59 when you get on 59, okay. 69, and then get on Washington Street there. So, where she's pointing? She actually two cars came in the ditch. You get out. Okay. So, if there's a car there, somebody's got to stop. Now, imagine. Even if you don't want to traffic to you, how much you're going to, um, yeah, how much you're going to be able to do. That's right at that curve. Yeah, that curve. So you might be there now that street. So, you know, I know, I know what they want, and I don't have any good answer for that, but you know, we have to look out for our street. And then, if you add, all the way here, too far. They're coming from the from side the street. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, a lot of the traffic is going to go this way around and come back and try to avoid that bridge. But right now, it's not our that's going on. Well, they'll be there a long time. Yeah, you know. So, I don't know if they can put it off or you can, you know, I don't know what, but um, it's just, it's not that it's just going to create more, more of a headache for everybody, not just us. Thank you. Bobby, where do we stand on getting the, where do we stand on getting the uh, speed limit lower? The school district is working on that. Uh, we understand that somebody is doing a survey of, of the traffic counts. Uh, we were told by the past, and we thought that it may, it may have been ours. So we know that Textot is supposed to look at it and maybe looking at it right now. But they're probably looking at 2025 interchange and, and not necessarily the change. They, they know that we're looking at the possibility of closing it. But they don't have an interest in that. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Well, because I got at school, you know, they're going to probably lower that to right hand turn and left hand turn and do that. But we don't even know. Now, the, the, the church is wanting to make sure that they have the campus all in one street. It may be simple enough that if we need to move the street, we move it to the north, that make it area that they own. Still have three part of their parking lot improvement. We still need access. They're still going to need access into to their uh, their parking lot, and you still have semi private road that, that goes to that location. They're going to need it for their own traffic control. And that that to me is is a compromise that I think that everyone can look at. Are you proposing to basically put another road or a parking lot uh, basically up against our property line, basically in their backyard uh, up against the property line to a kind of road going down to the street? Basically, I'm saying the possibility is something that we need to look at is to move to Main Street and still have a route that uh, would take tra traffic off. Bobby, you're talking about the wooded area that they own. Correct. Right. Not that far. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't hear you. He brought up school bus. what you said, please. Just pull your mask on. Yeah, my question, I think there's a bus for a the So the bus is not to go to the bus. I have a question for both of you. Daniel Street, do you have um, a lot of non-traffic on the table? We have a lot of traffic on the table. Do you have a lot of 18 wheelers? Do you have a lot of large trucks that come through there on both streets? Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, we have a truck in the middle of the street. Yeah, two cars went up there down the two entrances like that. Right. Chief, <laughs> you got a comment about it. We all know that that area is a big topic right now throughout this point. I mean, it takes out the word the issue. Of course, they have to do studies to more the students. Uh, engineers will do that. Uh, so that's nothing that you and I we make proposals to take stop that we can go on the street. Uh, we can get a traffic count of the amount of crashes that occurred in that particular area, or counts that they decided. Hey, why don't you get some ice? Ice your legs. We're also going to get ice there. That they have occurred in that particular area. All that we take about crashes. So we can provide those numbers as well. That is a interesting area. Uh, everybody trying to get around that traffic on top of that bridge. Take about looking at that. If the school goes in within the next year, that's really, really easy to be working. Yeah. Before I was down with you further, I tried. Personally, I hadn't, I just looked at it on the map. I needed to just drive it and just see for myself and get out of here. I can understand what the other side is trying to do. The church does a lot for the community. You know, we all love and appreciate that. Who's all there. Daddy's not there. You know, we got to, I just got to personally look at it. I've always loved myself. Thank you. And then by you. So, there are all Yeah, and, and I also like that uh, accident down in front of your church. 
Texting back on the answering it. So Robbie's back. So, so the, the wooded area is not going to remain wooded. That that is part of the construction as well. We're parking um, additional parking would be for the additional headcount that we would have on, on site at that location. So it's not that we're, we're trying to, to just close the road because we want to close and we want to build up to that, that point. It, we're, we're kind of crossing over that point and need to utilize the more of our land. Huh? So it, it's not just that, that we're, we can build across the, the, the size of the building that we have is, is more, we're, we're going to run into the same problem either way as to what meets the bounds of where we can build up to from a public street. So we have issues either way. It, it, it really does have to do, at this point, I think with both arguments being made, that it has to do more with the safety of the road itself and the condition of, of either one of these roads not being conducive for traffic than anything else. Mayor Council, I would like to reach out to uh, the residents of Tate, I'm sorry, of Cedar to see if, if they're uh, willing to look at the possibility of bringing that in the cul de sac. That way you wouldn't have the through traffic on Cedar. Uh, the only thing is it wouldn't have direct access back to the 59. So basically you would make a cul de sac just before it comes into Tate, and that would, that would, uh, Cut down on the cost of traffic to improve traffic, which is which is a major concern. Are you saying we would come to the I think it's like that you talking about it, maybe thinking about the policy that has to be made. I mean, I think in the in the um I, we, we just need to look at it. We need to look at it with our engineers to see if there's a solution that uh, we can come to where the uh, church can expand, move pace, and uh, we can find something that uh, we can all agree on and the residents can agree on on Cedar as well. So we just we need time to look at it for with an engineer. We want to bring it to you. Um, uh, we wanted to have a public hearing, so we're here for the Alvaro residents and the church as well, all from the area. So we'll go back and, and discuss this with our engineers and see what we can come up with. I'd like to make a motion. By the way, if there's anybody else would like to say anything else, so can we close the public hearing? Yes. We're in your council in action. And I'd like to propose uh, a motion to vote both the church and the residents. Would you give us a, a time? for next council meeting. 
so that we can put this uh, inside, I guess we were going to try to table it tonight, tonight so that we could uh, go with our study, review the, the one year photos on both sides so that we can all be fair and come up with a, the best solution that would fit all of you and in the community. And um, I agree it's dangerous and I agree you need to expand. Um, Churches are important, communities are important, and we're here to help you to do what we can do um, to help both parties and, and be able to, to, to make the right decision. So if you don't mind, I would like to make a motion to table this item and um, come back and see what new, new ideas, new developments we have had on this so that we can possibly make the correct and the most decisive decision that we can for you and the community. Second. Is that there? Is that everybody okay with that? I second. Please. Artistry? Are you okay with that? Then I'll give it to force everybody to go into this and we will hopefully come up with a solution for everybody. I mean, we didn't know this, their, their side the last time we met. Right. And, and, uh, and, and, and during this, this um, period, Please feel free to contact council, contact the city uh, manager, and, and bring your ideas and um, concerns go forward because it's, it's a discussion we're going to have to make a decision on at next council meeting. Where would you serve today, Ron? Okay. 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 Any other discussion with council? We have a motion from Mr. Fox and a second from Danny that we table this until next meeting as we can. Talk with Daryl in here and the church and the people that have problems and see if we can work something out. Any other action? All those in favor? Yes, sign motion. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, John. Yep. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Item seven is the workshop on the streets of Memphis Bay. Pay a million dollars for the streets for the farm. I went out and looked at streets in the rain yesterday and did a drainage survey at the same time. Mayor Council, we have Savannah coming in. We've been working on this project. She's our uh, project manager. Uh, I'm sorry, our management handler. <laughs> The priority listing of the street paving uh, is uh, I'll turn it over to you. Good evening, everyone. Um, Bobby already said I'll be presenting the proposed streets for the 2021 street paving project. Um, this project will be funded by the bond series 2021 that we will hopefully be approving tonight. Um, here's the list of the 21 streets that have been brought to staff's attention. These streets have been rated by an average based on the paving condition and the traffic volume. I will be presenting each street based on the location. Um, there will be a summary at the end um, with cost of each street. <laughs> Starting with the south side school area, we have Cook Street. This is between South Travis and College. Um, we have an estimated price of 10200 It is currently trip and sealed. The volume of traffic is very low here. South Travis is rated at number six. Um, it's between Fort Worth and Carter that we're estimating for 63000 Um, The traffic here is heavier. <clears throat> Over in the River Street area, we have River Street. At rated at number two. This is a mix between business and residential. Um, the estimated paving for River Street is forty-six thousand five hundred. Um, it's a moderate traffic value volume throughout this whole area. 
Um, Love Street is between 105 and River. It's estimated at 15,000. Um, and then moving on to Love Street, we have an estimation of 11,200. Um, there are two manholes on Man uh, Mayo Street, but this will also complete the paving that was done prior um, that leads up to Love It, Love It all the way to um, Weber. And then we have Dunham. It's estimated at 47,000. However, we do have a water line between Liberty and River Street that will need to be re will need to be replaced. Over by Old Cold Springs, um, Old Cold Springs Road is rated at 11 on our list. Um, the estimation of the paving is 50,000. It's a moderate traffic area, I would say right now. Um, however, this does butt up to the quick trip development and we would possibly expect the uh, traffic to increase there. Also, Penny is estimated at 22,000. Um, this is also butts up straight to the QT development, and we also expect it. This whole area, the water and sewer lines are in poor condition and will need to be replaced. Across North Washington, we have Bardash. It's rated on our list as number nine. The estimated paving cost is 11600 It's a moderate um, traffic volume. And then we have West Booth, who had this street has heavier traffic. It um it goes over the railroad tracks. We're not paving that, but it will go over the railroad tracks over by the fire station, just to give you where it might be where it is. Um it's it's at eleven thousand six hundred as well. And we have Elizabeth Street that's all that's uh moderate traffic at nine thousand five hundred. Bardash is in the worst condition. Compared to the other two streets, however, the traffic volume at this street exceeds the other two. Over in Precinct 20, we have East 4th Street, and that has an estimated cost for 18000 It is a dead end and very light traffic. And we have Ross Avenue between 2nd and 4th Street. That is also light traffic. Ross Avenue is rated as number eight on our list. Both of these roads, however, are in very bad condition. Over towards Neville Street, we have Lamar. It does have a deteriorated manhole and drain gate. The estimated paving cost is 35,000. Linea Alfred is rated 15 on our list. This, also, this road also needs a whole new water main. The estimated cost of paving is at 35200 uh, in, in the Angel Street area, we have Ramey Street. I drive at 14. There's not uh, very many homes on the, in this area. It is a dead end. The estimated paving for Ramey is 13000 Roger Street. It is also estimated around 13,200, and it is also a dead end. So there's light traffic in both of these areas. Angel Street um, is the main road to get to Ramey and Rogers. It's estimated at 29,000. It is in fair condition. Uh, however, the cross streets, which are Ramey and Rogers, are deplorable condition, although there are very few homes on Rogers compared to Ramey. Over in the Glen Park area towards Eastside Elementary, we have Cary Street. And this whole area is very, has very heavy traffic due to the school. We have Cary Street from Parkhurst to Fenner at 67,500. Shell from South Line to Truman is currently chip and steel at 14,400. And then Truman to Eastside, the paving is fair compared to other roads. However, the basing is very poor in this, uh, is in very poor condition. And that's uh, estimated at 28,004, or I'm sorry, 200,084, 500. Um, a new water line is needed between Truman and William. Jefferson is number one on our list. This road 
Um, we'll also be knowing, we'll be meeting milling and rebasing at $5 a square foot, uh, which is estimated cost of $384,000. And then lastly, we have a few unpaved areas that are in the Glen Park area. We have Daniel Street, Lyle West, and Culbertson. Culbertson may possibly cross over a pipeline, so the cost would are unknown at this time. However, staff does recommend that we uh, wait for developers to come in who are ready to build homes in those areas and let them pay those streets. <laughs> I guess we're still in Jefferson one uh, parallel uh, to east side of the street. They're both in about the same position besides the base that's failing. It really went, even though they both rank very high in the base failure, the majority of our costs, when we, when we look at the cost breakdown, we go to the next slide after the one. So when you look at the summary, you're looking at Jefferson alone being 384000 out of the entire 1.4 million that you have on the screen. That's quite a bit for, I, I know that there's a lot of traffic on that street. Our thought is that we, even though both of them are in poor condition, we pick one. Uh, so we have a good route down to the school. I know some of them use, one can use the bus, but the other uh, also has a car pickup. But if we could take care of, the thought is to take care of one of the two streets. In order to spread, the improvement around all the neighborhoods. It's a lot of chunk of change to spend in one area. Even though we have a school school at that location, use it. Our thought is that uh, we do either Jefferson or Rochelle, and then we're able to spread uh, uh, our our ability and flexibility to do other streets. And we have an analysis of that. So you can see the dotted line here. Uh, the Spanish put on my slide. Um, how many streets is that Savannah? Uh, this is the, the second option where shell, the second half of shell is put towards the end. And we could do 15 streets if we do the millinery basing at a later date on shell. As to if we were doing the millinery basing now, we could only do 10 streets. So we can do five extra streets. And the cost that she has uh, listed here is also, the original thought is that we just do the paving on the streets that uh, uh, that had good water and sewer lines underneath them. If we do that, we'll never take care of the streets that we take care of. And honestly, if you have bad water and sewer lines, we can go ahead and take care of it. So we actually have four streets here listed that would also include uh, 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 repair of the water and sewer line. And those amounts are listed in the column in the technical last column uh, on, on the new line. So we're looking at uh, shell, there's a portion of shell that we'd like to do that has $10,000 of water and sewer line improvement. And then Perry has nearly 30,000, love at 78,000. And uh, Lena Alfred at 23, 27, almost 28,000. These, these are areas that we really need to take care of that need to be part of the paving program. We can still do all those streets Jefferson, River, Shell, Perry, Gum, South Travis, Mayo, Walsh, Bardas, Love, Old Cold Creek Road, Booth, Cook, Ramey, and Lena Alfred can still be. Below a million dollars. Shell goes, is that where they pick up a piece yeah. on shell? Or is it there? Yeah. Shell, that was where you could. The one parents pick up their kids, is that the front of the school where the bus is going to be in the shell? And yeah, we've got a lot of nice houses on shell. I would yeah. think that we should do both Jefferson and Shell. Because they run parallel together. And I, I think we should do both of them. Now, I have a question though. How do we come by this rating video? 
This is, Did this someone is, drive out? Yeah, we drove out yesterday. Okay. okay, because I don't see Spanner on here. I think that Spanner, Spanner is the speed. Everybody cut the clock, get over to, what is that? We just did. Huh. We did. Yeah. They go down to the railroad track? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's already been done. That was, that was done in December. Yeah, we oh. now, This is not concrete. We tried to, we drove it yesterday for the different flood, but we saw a lot of the drainage in the streets. And I guess but we're trying to pick the ones okay. that are absolutely the worst. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Lydia after what where is that street? That's right on the Street, uh, is that 787? Yes, it's going to 787. Yes, yes. That was the uh, Street, uh, Jones, uh, Rose Jones. Uh, I believe it was Gwen previously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Gwen, this, uh, Here's my other part then. Okay. Here. The, the streets that has the moderate traffic on, you know, those may be some streets that you might want to consider. Sure. And I know you could be trying to get all across the neighborhood, but you may not need to do that. You know, okay. When you put it all in one spot, it, it, you can see what you're doing. You can see the, the improvement. Instead of trying to stretch it from two years to here, that, that's the thing about the modern. Well, we, we did, Marilyn. Well, one other, okay, let me make a point. Go ahead. Go ahead. And one other part is uh, Cook Street. Cook Street is a very short street. So, you know, that's that's another thing too. I mean, and it is real bad. I know what I see it is real bad. Right. But some of the short streets, the moderate, the moderate, you might want to hold off on the moderate if it's not a whole lot of traffic going through. And just sort of focus on the ones with the heavy traffic. Right. And maybe something close to a business. And that was not the heavy traffic and close to a business. That way you can see the improvement instead of trying to scatter here. You can't satisfy everybody at one time. You know, so you need to get the, the, the areas that are most important. That's that's my that was my plan. So when our, our priority was left, and if you'll go one slide back, okay. So this is how they ended up in priority order here. It would actually allow us to do less streets, but yes, we would be able to take care of the detail. And what we did, we did our scientific best at basically staff rating this. And we want to bring this to you because we want council to be involved in the process. And if we need to add streets, if you feel like something is not on the list, it doesn't feel like, hey, I, I really think that this is in worse condition that we need to be higher on the list. I, I want to have this discussion. So uh, this is in a workshop format, but we, we basically graded it on a one to 10 scale as far as traffic and a one to 10 scale on condition of the street itself. That was basically, and then we took the average, and that's how we did the priority listing. Now that wasn't very scientific, but it was, it was done at a staff level. And I actually brought the mayor out and, and I had him drive. We actually looked at drainage while we were looking at streets yesterday. Uh, so uh, we could get some eyes on it. And, uh, and I asked my staff to do the same. And Mary, I can look at places, you know, that maybe where there's two streets that intersect. It may just be a bad place right there that you pull away. Do this that area. Not say maybe even do the whole street. If the street is in fairly good, you know, shape, just Take care of the places that are really coming apart. Right. And and there are some of those that we know the water and sewer. We got to do that. We need to get that done before we go spend money and put them on top of stuff that we may dig up two or three months later. I am uh, we I know go ahead. go ahead. I drove a lot of these streets and looked at them and they all over town. And, and it doesn't matter which ones that we choose to repair, there's always going to be one that you know, there's going to be some questions about. We're not going to be able to satisfy everybody. But 
some of these streets here, like Perry Street over there, in, that's a bad street. Yeah. Uh, Line Alpha Street, Lamar Street, that, those streets are hard. But also on the Shell and Jefferson, uh, that's going the east side. And uh, I think that should carry a lot of weight. Was from, uh, it's a nice home. Home. Yeah, it's a nice area. Yeah. And, uh, but I think we kind of covered the whole city, you know, and, and regardless of which one that we choose, it's going to be always some that, you know, we could have. You know? So we just, you know, just do the best we can with what we, the resources that we have. So, yeah. And if council has some boundaries that they see tomorrow or whatever, yeah. we need to bring it up and put it out that we can put, put it as a different priority and feel like these. We know the ones that we got water and we don't have to worry about. And they're high traffic, I'd like to get those first. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at what, if it's yeah. a, just a block, some of what you saw on that end, but you know, there's still streets and people's houses, and they were in pretty, pretty bad shape. Well, I, I think what we really need to look at, though, is that we are actually doing this. This has been needed for years. And we are in the driver's seat to do this. And I'm just happy that we're doing it. And I think a lot of people are going to be happy to see this. Oh, I think it's going to make a big difference in our city. I think it's really going to do. Yeah. Like I say, we're going to miss them. That's why I'm asking you all. Yeah. Just that I have to uh, uh, have to deal with the streets and stuff that we are going to be having to repair. Now, most definitely do not want to take over a street. To dig it up and put some line that we haven't had any time before. Um, can we prioritize those trees that we don't have any disturbance that I need to be on and have those done first? Yes, sir. We looked at that first, and then when we, we started looking at the streets, it's like, okay, we're passing up some trees that really have, have some issues. So, Linnea Alfred was one of them, and I just it's in such bad condition, I, I just don't see staff passing that street. We just need to take care of the water and the sewer issues so I think that it's part of that project. And we've added that cost in here. So on the preferred option, if you could go to the last slide, that really, you know, everybody's a taxpayer, and it, to me, it's very important to, to, to spread it out. Uh, I, I do see that we need to get priority to these businesses, heavy streets. Uh, I'd like to start with this list, and I, I want to give it to council for their review and make some decisions on those streets that need to change up and down from that dog line. And I think that that's probably the best process. And uh, we should have uh, proceeds here soon for bond. The weather's going to be good. We go ahead and start the overhead project. I'd like to get started this summer. That's, that's what staff wanted to do from the very beginning. Do we know what month and this summer? I I was planning on July, sometime after July 1. So we have to be in. I think that's good. We may be able to do all, all of it. Uh, we want to, I'm being conservative with my million dollars here. We may be able to break it out. We can. I, I'd, like, I'd like to hear your input on the work. Thank you. Mayor has a 
about for three minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and continue the meeting until we get back. Okay, we're going to go on to item number eight presentation of the employee service award for May of 2021. Mayor Preston, we we have uh, we have five that uh, uh, have uh, have a service award. Actually, we have four. Sorry, we have four. And the first one is Jacob Snyder. Jacob has uh, been with us in our department. He's been with us for five years. Is Jacob here tonight? No, sir. Unfortunately, I don't believe any of the service award teams are here. Um, Mr. Pippen was online, but he must have had to drop off. Um, we, uh, we have his award plus a nice coffee cup with uh, the ladder truck on, on there. So uh, we'll make sure that we get that. The next one is Lisa uh, Arthur. With five years, also with the fire department, and has his service award certificate uh, and the service award pin, as well as a coffee cup with our fire pumper on. And in 15 years, is Wesley Matlock with uh, Cemetery Park. This one is really high in the first to get the lot of their coffee cups. So we got what's laid here, a little bit of paint on the coffee cup. Uh, it's a certificate as well. So we'll, we'll get that out to them. And then Kevin Pippen had 20 years of service uh, as our you know, he is now our interim uh, public service board. So if you if you'd uh, give them a hand for the work that they did. I mean, thank you for the service award. We just want to thank each and every one of those guys who great job they do for our team. So we're going to move on to item number nine, a presentation of quarterly employee high five award. Mayor Pro Tem, the, uh, this is a presentation that we give quarterly for a high five award. Uh, and this uh, Quarterly award goes to Joe Rosas and Megan Kroll. Uh, on Monday, April 26th, Officer Joe Rosas and Megan Kroll, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're patrolling the area on 59 when they observed a vehicle driving at a high rate of speed. After making a traffic stop on the speeding vehicle, officers later discovered a large amount of marijuana and assault. Five firearms. Pretty scary firearm. Three individuals were taken into custody and charged with possession of marijuana, which is a state jail felony, and unlawfully carrying that weapon. The chief, his chief mayor, chief police, please stand. <laughs> chief, would you? Will you do the honors? Will, will you uh, come on out and, and get them, give them their award for uh, for this event? Um, I will say, Rosa, uh, you've been with the department for six years, is that correct? And uh, Maggie Cole, you know, about two weeks. Two weeks. More than five. She learned the fact that she wouldn't be dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> These guys did a very good job. I'd like to commend them because, again, it wasn't just a routine stop and it was a good learning experience. You lost the trial with all the paperwork as well as you never know who you put on. We've got a very high, powerful firearm assault back right there in the park, all the way from Louisiana. And 
Good evening, y'all. Uh, we were invited up here to speak with y'all. We were driving through y'all city with a couple of councilmen and people from the city that were discussing y'all's landscaping and beautifying the areas of Cleveland in, in this area. Um, Ambassador Service has been around since 2007 in the Houston surrounding area. So we've serviced multiple municipalities throughout the area, um, from Houston to outside of Katy to Sugarland to Angleton, going up towards Waller, coming out towards the Woodland. We do multiple services. We try to put everything together so it could be a maintenance package, basically, for a lot of municipalities, businesses hospitals, things of that nature, and landscaping is one of them. Um, we went through and we looked at a lot of the areas that uh, the city's looking to improve. And I brought Sean Lawson along with me, who is our manager of all of our landscaping divisions. So I'd like to come up and let you know what we got planned for y'all. Thank you, John. Mr. Mayor, council members, thank you for having us. It's going to be hard act to follow for a uh, traffic stop involving marijuana and uh, assault weapons, but I'll do my best. Uh, everyone has a packet that they can follow along with. We're not going to cover every single slide tonight, but basically, as John said, we're a full service landscape company, meaning that we do it all from the design, for, uh, design stage all the way up to the installation and maintenance. Um, there you go. So basically, as you see here, we, we also do drainage work as far as, you know, in the landscape. We do irrigation services. We do large uh, tractor mowing, right-of-way mowing, uh, streetscapes, and um, plantings. Uh, we also provide a number of additional services that go with that, um, meaning tree work, um, emergency tree removals, storm care, uh, after storms, things like that. Um, like John said, uh, we were asked to come out here and take a look and uh, look at some areas for future development. Um, we provided some information for y'all to look at and, and uh, you know, decide if y'all wanted to uh, retain us to do that. The, the main thing I can say is the, the overwhelming um, note of today's council meeting is growing pains. And uh, it's good. Um, they can be troublesome as to, from the beginning, but uh, in the end, everybody comes out ahead. And you guys are, are set right now to make some significant improvements on many fronts. And uh, we at Ambassador hope that uh, we'll give us the opportunity to work with y'all to help that uh, dream come true. Thank you. Um, Sean, and would you all like to discuss, I know that we've given you our RFP um, that we did have open, um, and you all had to, uh, a discussion with um, the council, a council member and his staff, yes, and you understand our, our idea. Um, can you break it down to council to let them understand um, what the process is, uh, when phase one is going to be designed, and then since we've not done this before, can you break it down into the processes for us? Absolutely. So the RFP was not exactly clear in the, defining a, a role of how this was going to proceed. So when we started looking at it and we met with uh, council at the uh, town mall, we decided that the best approach would be to provide this in three separate phases. Phase one being just a design and planning phase where we meet with council, we meet with the beautification committee and anybody else that wants to be a part of that. At that point, we take all that information together and we can go two ways. We can have a licensed set of architect, landscape architect plans designed and, and drawn. Uh, those would include everything from, one of, the, one of the things that we noticed along the train tracks there's going to be some right away issues. There's also some significant drainage issues now from the construction of the sidewalks. 
and a few flower beds. So those will need to be addressed. There would be a set of plans for that. There would also be a set of plans for irrigation and then a planting plan so that all those things work together. And this is long range planning. So whether or not you have the funds to do it within the next year or two, 10 years from now, there's still a guiding force for somebody to pull that out and say, all right, we looked at this in 2021. This is what's going to go here and here and here. And then you can bid it next year. Phase two would be taking said plan, providing y'all with a proposal for the exact work to implement that plan, whether that be the irrigation, drainage, everything that we just discussed. And then the final proposal would be for maintaining that after the installation. So the maintenance portion of this would be exactly what you're thinking about. Fertilization, mowing, um, sprinkler repairs, repairs if there's an accident where somebody drives through the landscape, those types of items. And then in addition, we were asked to also look at some other city locations to get a thought process of trying to make the overall plan flow with every city building. So that what you see in town mall, you still see at city hall, or you see at the library, or you see at the police station, what have you, it's got that same feel to it throughout. And then maintaining that. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, sir. We we are capable. Like I said earlier, we're a full service company. We're happy to work through all of that. We do offer all types of streetscape work, uh, as well as maintenance and you know maintaining hanging baskets or quarter service for you know a park area down. But you didn't do the design. Say that again. No design have been done yet. We're just kind of in the early planning stage. So we're trying to get together some information, and that's what this RFP was about. The price they gave Ms. Clay was for engineering plans, architectural service. They would meet with a design um, group um, and they would come up with a design and you can either have the architect license drawings or you can have the, the drawings without the architect label on them so the costs are in the booklet and that would be phase one for them to come out and decide what is our our plan they would create the design for us and then we would implement um phase two right what was the final i'm sorry what was the final uh, phase maintenance for maintaining this is a long-term and that way they could also have input. I think there was supposed to be another project of people that were supposed to be involved by the council. So to be able to we'd be meeting with all that to get a clear understanding of what y'all are looking for also too. It's not just our recommendations, it's coming from y'all and from the people that will be on that committee to help plan what's going to be planted and how it's going to be maintained in the future of what it looks like. Because you got many different seasons happening. So, you know, you can't just put, go to a flower store and buy flowers and plant them because they're going to be dead in a month or two months. We're looking at stuff that's going to last long term. And then also, also too, you're going to have your seasonal changes too. But this way we can plan that ahead of time. And y'all have a set plan for what it looks like all the time. So that way, no matter who's around, it's going to be the same consistently. It's not being <laughs> and clean up and all that fun stuff too. Yeah, right. Um, I think you for your presentation. It's very okay. helpful. Thank you. I appreciate the time you spent on Friday together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, sir, they did not get it. We do have an item on the um, end of discussion and action on number 29. Um, in regards to that, but we do do an RFP, and unfortunately, we did not have any bidders. However, um, they actually bid on our janitorial um, RFP, and they had a flyer in the janitorial, uh, which we opened, um, and stated that they did landscaping. So we immediately contacted them and said, Hey, come on out, we'd like to talk to you about this product. So 
Yes, sir. <laughs> Design aspect that was meeting six meetings were allotted for the beautification committee as well as council to come up with a concise, you know, plan, if you will. Then it will be implemented in formal drawings. Uh, that's going to take probably a couple of months for that to happen. Um, at that point, it doesn't take very long once those are agreed upon to generate a proposal and quote for the actual install and work to be done. And at the same time, maintenance can be proposed um, along that same timeline, as long as we have a clear plan and understanding of what needs to be maintained and what location. All right, so we're looking at if we went with that plan um, a couple of months, we're probably looking more toward the fall um, before anything would be in the ground, per se. Yes, so two months for the design phase, a couple months after that for implementation. Um, and then make them accept All right. Thank you very much for the clarification. Yeah. Also, we didn't have to plan to do it over the holidays. It's a good thing to get into Halloween and Christmas holidays. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question, please? Uh, so, is this, is this including other areas other than the mall area? Yes, ma'am. So, this is also including the facility. I would like to know if council is looking for staff plans, architectural plans, or if we're doing want to do something uh, a little less than that. Well, this is I'm saying City Hall, Civic Center, all Oh, yeah, this, this originally came up because we wanted to do something in the downtown area. We had gone to, to uh, EDC for assistance uh, because of the phase one of the sidewalk plan. We couldn't have the landscaping as part of the, uh, the actual grant. So we literally had some flower beds there that have been empty. I'm looking for some landscape assistance so we can do it right. Um, if we, we want to focus on that area first and then branch out to the facility, that might be a plan. I would like some input from the committee, and 
I know that we have an ad on committee that's formed. I would ask for them to, to go back and meet and decide kind of what the scope would be. I prefer to just take a bite just the downtown area and focus on that with the idea of expanding it through our facility. I do like the continuity of having some kind of landscape that brings all the city together. We need somebody like that that can put it together. I don't know. If, I don't think that we need to have stamp plan at this point. I think we need to get something in the ground or right downtown. I want it to be nice. I want it to be something somewhat permanent uh, that we can all uh, have pride in um, and just move forward. Um, as far as being stamped or not, that depends on whether they are RP or RP. I mean, we can we can serve them as part of what's possible because of their professional organization. Right. Um, Whether they're landscaping or not. I think the committee and the city reserves uh, there's a lot of it has been too long coming. And we've, we've tried so many times to adopt a program for uh, a flower bed or a, a, a pot or downtown or something like that. And it starts out well and it just continues along with a lot of other things. But we, we, we've got to have a, well, what did you call it today? Uh, we didn't have a, um, a, plan, a plan that was, you used the term. Cocktail napkin? Cocktail napkin? No, not oh. cocktail napkin. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> but it was a um, some kind of plan to see the city manager said it. It was a continuity plan. It was something that was going to continue throughout the city so that you, you're, whether you're a city hall or you're in the mall, it all not necessarily looks the same, but that's the same feel. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned at that time was is that this is a long range planning goal. Uh, you know, obviously you've got street improvements that you're working on. You've got, I'm sure, other projects that are, you know, you know needing time and money to spend to it. So, hence the reason, you know, this is one of those deals where it will take a little bit to, to get to that. Sure, sure. Now, I did also provide you with the cocktail napkin price, uh, as well as if, you know, by chance you needed stamp license plan.
go out there, we're going to have to do it legally and see what's coming back. If they're the only ones that come back, that's fine. We'll do the work. That's what we want to do. We can I think Carolyn and Ms. Cook is also one of the ones that we won't have. If y'all want to skip a step about if you want to see the scope of the proposal before it goes out, as collectively as a council, that's something you're interested in. So if you want to delegate that to the city manager in the app on the so that we don't have to come back to council and get the proposal. The proposal that we did send out in, in your packet, we did provide a copy of the RFQ. Okay, so the whole point is that our committee is to come up with whatever revised text from John Lennon in our house, all city facilities, whatever you want to do. But it's not going to look like what we're going to do. So, well, like, again, I think they understand that we can do what we can do a year. Next year, we'll come back and add to it. Right, but that's the thing. It has to be a phased approach, it's not to be able to do the other one. Yeah. No, it is a phased approach. That's all of our So, y'all are going back and discuss with them, and then we'll be right. I will, I will propose to make a motion that we'll take this back to the uh, landscaping committee. Ms. McWater, Mr. Cook, and Ms. Lacey. With the ambassador, and we'll sit down and we'll discuss that. So, if you want to take a look at it, what do we need to do? Well, really, the only direction is staff. I think we collectively understand that we're going to work to come up with a revised uh, request for proposal okay. uh, based on the input we've got from the expert. So, do you want to see that request for proposal before it goes out and bless it, or do you want to delegate that to the city manager? Would you like to delegate to me or do you want to have a group? We have a 
members. I appreciate being here tonight. Uh, some of you we saw today at the Taste of Cleveland. It's the first uh, actual event we've had this year where we have a public people coming in. We had about 200 people, 32 booths, and the word we got back was the food was great, everything was great. So uh, We appreciate uh, all the support we get from the city, but uh, we're back in back in uh, groove now. Next Tuesday, we have at the log cabin. We have an after hours. Uh, it's kind of an after hours networking and a new member reception. So we take all the new members who came in for the first four months of the year, and they'll have tables there, plus all the other members and other people in the city. So we put on a lot of new members so far this year. On Wednesdays, our Chamber 101. If anyone doesn't know what the Chamber is, come on down. Get a free lunch with it, too. Thursday, June 3rd, is our Chamber Luncheon. It's going to be a Cornerstone Church. Speaker is Noel Salak. Text us. 
you want to ask some questions, that's a good place to answer them. And then uh, our outdoor expo is June 5th. And uh, we didn't have it last year because of COVID, but it's a great thing. It's a super kid zone. We have outdoor vendors, inside vendors, an archery for the kids, BB gun for the kids, and axe throwing for the kids. So, uh, we've got a uh, catch and release fish tank, safety seminars. We'll have a life flight helicopter coming in. We've got a bunch of uh, different truck trucks. Touch a truck, we'll have uh, fire trucks, police vehicles, SWAT teams, things like that. And uh, we'll have our browse site fit again this year. That was one of the most popular events the year before, uh, in 2019. And then Thursday, June 10th is our Cleveland Connections. That's the only networking group in Cleveland. It's uh, once a month, it's Fat Floyd Smokehouse. And then we've initiated, the Chambers initiated a new entity called Leadership East Texas. And the mission is identifying recruit potential leaders from East Texas, educate the current and potential leaders, provide experience to local community enhancing leadership skills, facilitate relationships to build among our new leaders, and encourage the uh, exchange of ideas for our community and the area. And we're seeking right now memberships. We have uh, some cities have signed up for it. We've got some uh, school districts that have signed up for it. We're looking for EDCs to sign up for it. I'll be by, Fred. Uh, and we're looking for uh, uh, county commissioners to look sign up for it too. It's a great program. It's going to create some homegrown leaders, which we are uh, desperate need in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, the Tuesday night, yeah, that's that's a it's a chamber sponsored event, but it's not a chamber event. That's uh, oh, th this no, I'm sorry, next Tuesday that that's at the uh, log cabin, and that's kind of a networking, and you meet some of the leaders, uh, some of the businesses in town, plus you meet the uh, new businesses that have joined the chamber this year so far. And there's food. <laughs> Is there anybody left on Zoom? <laughs> um, if you'd like to speak in public comment, please unmute yourself or use the chat feature. Mayor, there are no comments. Okay. Item 12 is reports and comments. I count the mayor and city staff. The only thing I have a comment is we do have a food drive. Uh, 
and we do need volunteers. And there is a uh, volunteer uh, link that you can go on to find out. So if you know anybody that wants to come out and help, please uh, guide them over to that link and we have them to come out to the food drive. And this is going to be a specific set up parking lot. So, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Great, be signed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone too. I appreciate everybody as much as I can. I appreciate it. But I'd also like to tell you and thank everybody for showing up on Thursday. Uh, food frenzy for the uh, food truck at Super Farm. It's been a very good success. Um, we had a great turnout on the first uh, Thursday, the second Thursday. For and festival, and I uh, appreciate the people that have that together in the color of the community and people that support me. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the COVID. Oh, yeah. um, I, I just want to mention the play for page one where you're in September 10th and 11th. Also, in public, week, uh, public work presentation. And they did a fantastic job with police and fire on uh, May 11th with the storm and uh, getting our, our basically our streets. Uh, we, we had a lot of down trees and, and they were they worked till midnight uh, to, to get that done to get those streets passable. So very appreciative. We're going to meet them on Friday uh, for, for Public Works Appreciation Week. And Chief, I believe we also, this is. Uh, Police appreciation week. Was that the last one? Yeah. So this was last week. And this week is public work appreciation. And we covered the Juneteenth parade. We had the Texas Theater anniversary. And uh, we also had a library annual science project. But there was some judging that was done today. So uh, we'll, we'll have that in your report as far as who won. Uh, the, uh, the science projects at the library and uh, who's Rob on May 4th? That's all I have. And um, we had on May the 3rd through the 8th, I believe, was Municipal Clerk's Recognition Week. So I just want to give a shout out to Jennifer. She is a um, awesome deputy clerk, a uh, deputy city secretary. Um, she's learning a lot and um, she makes the job easy. So thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Adam. Uh, well, this is consent agenda. Um, we need to take out the consent agenda. We need to take 25 to 26. Discuss that's correct, Mayor. And we have Joe Morrill and uh, Mr. Jonathan Burrell here. Uh, and if you guys want to be able to stand up and share the good news that we have on our lawn. Very good. Good evening, Bobby. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council, Joe Morrill with Field Top Securities, Jonathan trails with Bracewell. Uh, there's actually two items of good news. One, uh, as we were preparing for your bond sale, uh, we went to Moody's Investor Service for a rating. And as a result of our application and phone call exchange of information, the city was upgraded from an A2 rating to an A1 rating. So congratulations. In this booklet behind the fourth tab is a copy of that report, and I would encourage you to read that when you have a few moments. It talks about some of the really good things happening, some of the credit strengths of the city, which uh, among are your strong operating reserves on the scorecard. You uh, scored very highly on management and financial uh, results. Also, uh, they noted that you have a manageable debt level and uh, that right now you're experiencing quite a bit of uh, economic activity and growth of both residential and industrial. 
uh, on the horizon. So those were all things that led to the upgrade. On their scorecard, they actually have it uh, that the uh, rating would be indicative of AA3. And what that means to me is that in another three to four, maybe five years, with uh, continued growth, you're going to have another upgrade on your hand. So, you know, that's they're, they're seeing the positive trend and the ability of, of the city to manage the growth that's coming your way. So, congratulations on your forward thinking and planning and keep it up. So, the, uh, the next thing then would be behind tab one. You're going to see a chart, which is the BBI general obligation index. Okay, this is a graph of interest rates, and we use this very much like uh, the S and P 500 tracks the stock market. This is what we use to track and give us an indication of direction of interest rates. You can see on the far left of that that we have been toying with the historic lows here. We're just a little bit off, uh, off of those uh, historic lows. So the index is currently at a 2.28 for uh, the manner in which they measure it. Now today we did go into the market and ask for competitive bids to be submitted. We had four firms that had signed up. We got bids from two firms uh, at the time that bids were due at 10.45. One, and this would be behind tab number two, you'll see the bids that we got. Uh, Raymond James and Associated had the winning bid with a true interest cost of 1.965. And the covered bid was from BOK Financial Securities at a 2.166. Now, keep in mind that this is uh, the true interest cost is an average of your rates in a sense over the entire 25 year term. So this is indicative of the rate that you're getting for a 25 year borrowing. You had multiple pieces of debt that we had at different maturity streams. The fire station was the piece that went out for 25 years and that's uh, uh, how we got to a maturity of 25 years. If you look behind tab number three, you can see the debt service, and this is on the entire uh, amount of debt. Uh, we've got it broken up by project. So as you go into your budget, you'll be able to split that out and, and fund it from the appropriate source, whether it's water and sewer or tax cap. Um, but you can see the coupon structure that they put on it and uh, your annual debt service. So on your borrowing, uh, because they paid a premium, you're still going to put eight million into your uh, project funds, and on that eight million, you'll pay uh, two million one hundred fifty-one thousand in interest. You also have the option, if the uh, market conditions exist where you can save money to uh, call your bonds, you'll be able to do that in nine and a half years, and uh, also. Uh, if you happen to have the, the cash rather than refinance, you could pay down some of that debt. And that wraps up my presentation for this. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. We would recommend that you accept the winning bid at the one point nine. Yeah, that's, that's a good bid. Okay. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I just want to say this was the staff, this was staff and council's goal for a very long time to improve our bond rate. And we've done it. I would like to come back, Joe, to work really hard the next time we go out the bond. It'll be a while before it's taken out of state. Um, that uh, we improve our rating and we will work hard on this end. To, uh, on the financial side, on the management side, to uh, continue to improve the city's rate as we move on and uh, become a bigger and better city. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank
Forty-five. Forty-five is to approve an ordinance authorizing the issuance of city of Cleveland, Texas general obligation refunding bond series 2021. Levying a tax payment, therefore authorizing exemption prior to maturity of certain outstanding obligations providing for the award and sale of said bonds according to certain parameters and enacting other provisions related relating thereto. So this is actually accepted that. Yes, yeah, so and Jonathan has something he'd like to talk about. Yeah, 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 Mayor, members of council, um, I did want to stop you on this real quick because this is the refunding bond that we're going to talk about in a moment to talk about how you can save some additional money uh, potentially on some outstanding debt it's actually item 26 that's the ordinance authorizing the sale of the CEOs and so that's the one you would need to adopt in order to approve the uh, the sale that Joe just uh, okay so we're going to do item 26 and then we'll do item uh, yes sir refund all right all right 25 on this red, so we're going to go to 26 in approval of ordinance authorizing the issuance of the sale of the city of Cleveland, Texas combination tax free revenue certificate obligation series 2021 levy tax providing for the security and payment thereof, enacting other provisions relating thereto. Mr. Mayor, there are no other discussions. I think the motion to approve item number 26. Okay. Any other discussion with council? All those in favor? Oh, okay. okay. We just need a record of the vote. Aye. Marilyn. Aye. Okay, Mr. 25, Mayor. we've already read that. Okay, Mr. Mayor, there are no other questions. Oh, okay. On that B25, anything else? No, not on the on the uh, new money. No, on the refunding. Refunding oh. 25. Okay, okay, the refunding. All right. All right. Money. We're good. Yeah. We're good. One of the things that we have on the agenda is since rates are low to uh, take advantage of that fact and refinance some of your existing, just as you have the option to prepay on these bonds that you just, just issued in nine and a half years, we're approaching that date for uh, uh, significantly one bond issue that will mature and we can pay off on September 1. So we're within the window of time in which we can go ahead and take action to refinance that at a lower rate. Now, tonight, what you're going to be approving is allowing us to do that as long as we reach certain targets that are set in the ordinance. So, um, if we can't hit those, we can't we can't refinance without coming back and talking to you about that. Uh, but that is what that item is, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have on that. And I believe we had a set of numbers in the packet. The ordinance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Originally, we were yes. talking about thirty thousand dollars of savings. Um, we're uh, we're around eight percent. The last time we ran it at par, and I believe we're somewhere around two and a half million. Uh, so on a net present value basis, I think that's somewhere around one hundred sixty to one hundred seventy thousand. I'll make some money from you. We're going to have to have a part of the your vote. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, no, we're good. I just have to look at how the board specifically says how many people could get no input out. Okay, the consent agenda. Simply the motion on the table is not captured. Everything being asked. Oh. Yeah. I did my packet on Friday. Just me personally, I'm not going to vote on anything that I have not on. I've been going over this since Saturday. You know, but if y'all see other people feel different, that's fine. That's just my opinion. So, so why is it necessary that you make some change? What is the problem? Well, Diane said there's things on there that we need to discuss. Well, that's up to y'all. Well, we can continue to do what we do. Take that item off and discuss it. No. So what is the problem with that? But he won't support that. There's everything else on there. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's things that we need to discuss. Well, that's up to y'all. But you can't just take it off. Well, you can't just take it off. Well, I don't agree with that. If you have an item that you would like to discuss, then you alleviate that particular mm -hmm. item and discuss it. Uh, we have done that in the past, and how it's going to be like I don't know, I just feel that something uh, is sliding well for the black practice of the recording terminology. I would like to go and do it every other You don't do that before the meeting is done? Absolutely. We have a motion from today. Second. <laughs> I don't think it's my 
That's what we do. It gets a meeting member of the council wants to discuss something on the consent agenda. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's not unusual to have a consent agenda for routine administration. Um, but there is a motion to second. But what I what I what I've done is if it's not, we still can discuss it. Yeah, but uh, no, 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 it's on the council to continue to discuss. My point is. If there's something on the agenda, on the consent agenda, that I don't understand, I will pull that out when we discuss this. Some of the things are just really the simple routine stuff that we do every month that, you know, that we should, you know, be up to date on. Just, that's just my opinion. Good thing, so we can't take everything. Um, I, I guess it's We have a motion from the judge a second from the board. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Those again. Motion passed. Thank you. So we're going to start tonight. Well, no, that, that, would, that would go to the with the minor thing there, which he's want to pull out. I pulled out what I and that's what's supposed to be doing going forward. So we don't want to do that. We've all voted to do that. Yeah. <laughs> 
The motion is just to approve the consent items number 13, 14, 15, 20, and 24. That's the motion just to approve those items on consent. Correct. That's just to approve those items under consent agenda. How do you vote? Do we have a unanimous, unanimous vote, Mayor? I'm 16. Tomorrow you read that. James, what do you have, sir? What's your problem with 16? This is a problem. I want to discuss. I want to hear what everybody has to say about it. You know, I have my opinion, and I don't want to talk about it. You said you didn't have all you want. James, all right. I don't think I'm going to be with that. Don't come to me with that. So, um, I don't want to find out what you're doing. Okay. 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 Ok
Yes, M and S did uh, rebid at uh, at at eight six thousand. We added to the library, right? We did add the library. That's all. The rest of it, the rest of it is uh, similar to the service. Well, what I'm saying is the forty-two thousand dollars low bid is on the public investment service versus what we're doing now. They're saying eighty six thousand. Our, our, yeah, our current vendor currently, um, our annual cost on the current vendor is around 41000 That particular vendor, when they submitted the bid, they submitted the bid for 86000 We have no reasoning behind that. It had been some time since we've gone out the bid. It's been a healthy two bid out in support of services. And that's why we're here today. Uh, asking for approval of the bid. Now, Ambassador Services is the recommendation of, of the uh, administration. They are here. Uh, so they had already talked about landscaping services. And they, they can answer any questions that council may have. And just to let council know, we did call the references um, for Ambassador Services. Um, and all of the references that we did receive were very positive. Um, so we did do our due diligence in regards to that. Okay, we have a motion to carry on. So we decided that we accept the ambassador services for $2,160. And they will have to come back with the contract, um, which council will then review. Um, so this is just to award the bid, just to let them know that. Any other discussion? Yeah. Forty-two thousand one hundred fifty dollars and six. Any other discussion? 
discussion all those in favor again please sign All right, we're going to skip to item 32. It's consideration of possible action on approval of the preliminary plan proposed on the elementary school be located here at 2025. Yes, Mayor Council Williams, we have Tom with EMP Engineering. They are doing the engineering for Cleveland ISD on the north side. Good Mayor Council. And uh, Mr. Pennington, staff, good to be back with you here again this evening uh, for representing Cleveland ISD for the preliminary plan and the final plan. So if you recall, we <clears throat> were here a few weeks ago. We just did a council update for you, which there was no action item. It was just to give you an update on where we are. So as I mentioned then, uh, tonight we're coming before you to seek formal approval of that preliminary plan and the site plan uh, for this, which is the process that the city has, which <clears throat> is a step that gets us to where we want to get to, which is to get our final plan approved and then ultimately uh, a building permit. So I think we've presented everything. I think you guys have everything there. Uh, the staff has some things they want to say, and I'll just, I'll just stand here and answer any questions. Mayor, Council, staff is asking that we approve the preliminary plan. There are some comments that, but we're going through the preliminary process. Uh, those comments will be addressed before we get a final plan. We're asking for approval of the preliminary plan. Okay. I think that there will be some other. They're, they're, they have received comments from uh, from our engineering staff. Contracted out, and then we'll they'll, they'll address those uh, um, before the final process. I'd like to make a motion that we consider this, uh, that we go ahead and motion for the approval of the two years' past. Motion, Marilyn, and second. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Item 30, you know, it, uh, gives uh, consideration of possible action on resolution to accept the final report to the Texas Community Development, development Block Grant Planning Capacity Building Comprehensive Plan. Contract number 721904 for HR Grant. Mayor and Council, Rebecca Stan is here to, uh, to go over the uh, 2019. Uh, Grant that the city applied for on the planning capacity building comprehensive plan. This is going to deal with uh, our 20 to 30 year plan on our streets, uh, water sewage, and our facility, uh, as well as all of our uh, planning uh, for the entire city. Well, first, I'd like to just say that um, thank Stan Last Guy for letting me come. I'm going to try to keep it really short and high level. Um, you guys have done a lot of stuff that, you know, if we were just starting our plan, we would definitely be adding a lot more to it. Um, this is the final of the plan. It's definitely a living, working document. So, you know, you can keep going and adding to it, you know, as the future goes on. So, um, this, like, I mentioned this plan was financed through the Texas Department of Agriculture. Um, there was a, a copy posted, I think, on the city's website for public comment, as well as the public comment that we had earlier this evening. Um, 
We also did uh, public outreach during this plan. I, I believe it was September when we called out for public comments on some of the exhibits and some of our preliminary findings. Um, and that closed in December, December, December. And then we, we took those comments that could be get comments for that um, period. And we took those and we incorporated them all into the plan. So this is just a really high level um, view of a comprehensive plan for the city. Um, it's just a general vision uh, for the city going forward. It's for the next 20 years. I mean, I mentioned that it can become a living document. Definitely, we recommend every five years, especially with how things are changing here in Cleveland, that, that, that you guys revisit this plan. Um, there's different sections within the comp plan itself. I'm just going to briefly touch on all of them um, that are listed here. So the first one is land use. Uh, land use is a way to preserve open spaces. Um, they could be for floodplain reasons. It could be future trails or parks, centers. Um, it's a way to identify commercial areas, residential areas, industrial areas, and just the reasons behind some of those are there for the existing city, obviously, and then my existing here today. And I know you guys have zoning as well, and so some of that is in consideration. But but here is the rough uh, figure of the land use in the city of Cleveland. Um, with the San Jacinto River kind of coming through, there, there is a lot of green space, you know, potentially available for the city. It just will help you in, in planning for more things. The Central Business District, um, there was a lovely discussion earlier about some of that beautification. I know you, um, this last year, you, you guys have been working towards improvements with the sidewalk and the parking. Um, we really encourage you, this plan highlights some of that work that's been done, it encourages the city to keep doing that. A lot of that stuff is basically based on that 2011 improvement plan by the CDC. I mean, it, it's it's a little mess as you go through, but, but we just encourage to continue doing that and to improve that connectivity just with how, you know, City Hall and the Civic Center are so close to downtown. This could be a really great corridor for the city, um, which we also talked about in the transportation system section of the plan. Um, there was a couple different concerns that we raised, tried to address uh, safety concerns with thoroughfares, collector roads, um, with the discussion again earlier with the public comment, talked about that a little. And then the thoroughfare fair plan was really something that I think the city kind of in the background has been working a lot with the county and with TxDOT to identify areas on different roads to improve. Part of the purpose of, of making a plan like this is to help you guys have something to show state agencies like TxDOT that, hey, this isn't our plan. We, you know, are prepared for this and it will help you get some funding in the future. That's, that's one of the, the purposes of having a plan. And then just the city streets plan, um, the workshop that was discussed um, earlier at this council meeting had a lot of improvements for the city streets. I think, I mean, that's fantastic. We just keep, you know, one step at a time and then everything will get there. Um, this figure just shows some of those major thoroughfare improvements that are proposed. Um, it includes, you know, some different connectors off to the east side, um, a connector from the industrial area kind of up by the tail, you know, down towards the other side, the, the 321. Uh, the water system, the goal is just to have adequate water for the current population, for the future population. We really looked at uh, connecting and and strengthening the existing water system. There's some really old lines. There's some lines that are very small. Um, we could do some more looping. We could, you know, the elevated storage tanks that are planned at, at the Grand Oak site and that up north. Um, new wells come on, uh, especially.
especially up north to help with the pressure. All those things are, are covered. We do, I guess, one of the things that this plan also recommends is to do some really detailed master planning for some of these utilities, especially like water, wastewater, stormwater, um, and then park planning, because since this plan covers so many things, we were unable to really give a lot of detail on things, and, and since things are changing with the growth in different areas, we do recommend further study and further you know, planning, if you will, to, to really help the city prepare for some of that. So this is just our, our figure. It shows um, some of the new things planned, like the elevated lane on the north side there, uh, potential new well connecting in water plant four to the rest of the system. We can run a water line along 77. So all of these things are things to consider to think about to make the, the system stronger to help you guys have a more resilient water system. Uh, wastewater. Currently, the, the city has two plants, the East Wastewater Treatment Plant and the West Wastewater Treatment Plant. This plan discusses generally about expanding the East plant to cover more of the city's flows and phasing out the West Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, there's different things too that are recommended, like better mapping of the system, because, um, better asset management, addressing the I and I, which the city has been doing over the course of the years with different CDBC grants, addressing some of those I and I. So just continuing that, um, take a picture of the wastewater and some potential collector lines for industrial areas, uh, for new roads up 59, the storm drainage system, just looking at adequate drainage inside the city, for the future population, providing regional detention, really both uh, putting the drainage improvements in with the roadway improvements too, to try to address things holistically. A master drainage plan would really help too with understanding exactly how water is flowing in the different areas. And you could help by having a plan like that too, you can help development and can help you codify improvements to your drainage infrastructure overall. And then the recreation and open space and trails. Um, it, it looks at different the parks that the city has, improvements of those parks, maybe additions for new parks. Um, we didn't get as much into the weeds as you know I always would have liked to, just because we did the, the scope of this comprehensive plan, but there's opportunities to look at different areas, to connect areas, to look at hiking bike trails, um, to look at some of those facilities in order to connect and to provide neighborhood or city parks. So that was really quick. I, I know it's late. But if you have questions, um, please let us know. But, but otherwise, you know, there's no We've been working on this for a couple of years. I would like to say that this plan matches the county comprehensive plan, uh, the transportation portion of that. And I think we can reiterate that uh, if we have this project listed in our comprehensive plan, it's easier to go to Tech Dot and say, hey, we need to help funding on this project. And to this point, to say, yeah, we, we plan to do this project here, Tech Dot. Uh, it allows us to better access to uh, uh, getting uh, better success at getting grants. I guess that's what I'm saying. And, and not just for tech staff, but for Texas Water Development Board as well, for that SRF funding. The capacity building and comprehensive plan contract number 7111044. Where are we? Carolyn. 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 
Item 17 is a proposal for staff to gather benefits for the suite proposal request for the quality health benefits for the year 2021 and 2022. Hi, um, we also have Chuck Robinson with Gallagher on Zoom as well. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear us. <laughs> Um, this is our annual event or annual RFQ that we go out for our medical insurance. We do have a rate path on our dental and our vision, which is through MetLife, and we have a rate guarantee uh, through next year on Dearborn Insurance, which is our life, accidental death and dismemberment and long-term disability. So we don't need to go out on those services. However, we do go out every year for our medical insurance. At this time, we're not expecting any changes in our plan design. We did last year um, change to two different plans. We had a, what we call a buy-up plan, which is our current plan. And then the employee pays uh, $15 per pay cycle to stay on that plan, which has lower deductibles and, and other options. And then we have a lower price plan uh, where the employee only is 100% paid. That seems to be working really well. We have had no complaints, and our vendor has been Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, they are a very good company. Um, again, we've had no complaints. Our renewal with them uh, cannot come any earlier than 90 days from our effective date, which is October the 1st. So we always tend to have our bids open um, about mid July. Um, this year, we are going to go out for an RFP uh, for our bids in mid-June with a July 15th, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, on date for the bid openings. Then Gallagher uh, reviews all of the selections and then comes back and meets with the Health Benefits Committee um, with the options. And then based on that recommendation, we bring that forth to council. Um, because benefits and payroll are two of our largest items during the budget cycle. Are there any questions? Okay, you had no complaints anymore on this plan? No, ma'am. We've had no complaints with Blue Cross Blue Shield. They're extremely well, uh, well, they have a lot of vendors or a lot of doctors in their plan. Um, the employees have not been uh, grumbling. Um, in regards to that plan. So we're really hoping that we get a good renewal rate um, in regards to that. Um, we will have those numbers um, when the bids get open, and that'll be in mid-July. We are not looking at doing any plan design changes. We'll have the four structures, which is the employee only, employee plus spouse, employee plus children, and employee plus family. That seems to be working off really well. Um, for those that just have a child, they pay less than a, a family, a employee-plus family. We've been doing that for a couple of years now, and that seems to be working quite well. So what we're just asking for council tonight is just the approval to go out for our RFP as we normally do each year. This is approval for the employees. Can everybody satisfy uh, with this motion that we go ahead with this um, the request for the employee health benefits for 2021 and 2022 year. I have a motion from Maryland, a second. James, any other discussion? All those in favor? Item 18 is a change order number one to CF McDonald's electric. Additional 
day the contract for an ending date of March of May the 31st, 2021. Mayor Council, nobody likes to change orders, but this one's a good one. Uh, this was only extended because of uh, timing. Uh, and this really, I believe COVID played a factor in, into this with uh, one on the delivery of the generator itself and uh, getting getting that generator energized uh, by energy. So those were basically the, uh, I guess you could say the slowdown to get this project done. This is a CDBG GLO grant. It's an interesting grant because it's uh, two phases. Uh, one of the phases was to, to redo the drainage in front of City Hall. And this is the second phase that handled a new generator at, uh, at our, our water plant number four. So, sorry, the car, sorry, which is over by the hall. So we're just asking for approval to extend those. those How much will that I extended by 30 days. I'll make the motion that we go ahead with this extension um, on this item. Okay. I have a motion from Mayor on the second from James. You know the discussion of safety. Yeah. All those in favor? Against? Nine ten is um Acceptance of uh, resignation of the board of officer there. Montez. I make a motion to move the acceptance of resignation of the board of officer. Second. Motion from Danny and second from Maryland. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Again. My understanding is he had another job. And he's not allowed to be a, re a volunteer reserve officer. He has a job in another location. Is that right, Chief? Partial auto parts work. He is just a non paid volunteer police officer. He comes out and talks to you. He just wants to be right. Thank you. 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 Uh, you know, I've got the budget, but you got to the budget. You have to the Motion for yeah, motion to be second. 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 Uh, for the development of the 2021 and 2022 fiscal year. And those uh, dates are set. Several of the uh, <coughs> important dates uh, are based on the timeline that the state uh, provides for the job. Their budget. I'll make a motion that we approve the budget calendar for the fiscal year. Okay. okay, Marilyn, you made the motion. Danny seconded that motion. All those in favor? Yes. Um, Item 22 is a reappointment of board members position two, four, and six for a reinvestment fund. This is from LG Homes. Round two. So another high housekeeping item uh, for. Uh, Related to the board structure of Pine Woods Trail, that is on the correct. And we're recommending a uh, renewal of the board member as the motion to say the reappointment of the board members to the board six and the reinvestment down to the IHOP. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. 
Okay, yeah, we'll close the motion to adjourn to second. There are any other discussion? All those in favor? Yeah. Item 23, quarterly investment report for period of period ending March 31st, 2021. Mayor Council, this is also a housekeeping item that we do quarterly, part of our, our uh, investment policy. And the, the funds that are set for uh, for investing, we have uh, two text pool accounts that are related, one related to general fund, one related to water fund. And then we have a money market account in prosperity, which is a depository for both funds as well. Um, and you can see uh, based on that report, uh, the interest that has been earned over the three months. Um, and this might be a little less than you've seen in the past, and that has to do with uh, uh, lowering of the Fed rate, which impacts uh, the interest rate that you would see. Similar to what you would see in the wrong bank. Okay, thank for the month of March. Mm -hmm. Period ending March. Yes, so from, from January 1 to March. Yes, ma'am. Marilyn, you say? No, oh, Carolyn. Okay, we have a motion from James and a second from Carolyn. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Do we know on the value increase? 
that is the appraisal district, and they simply increase the value just like they've done with everyone else, unfortunately. The appraised value was 347 in 2019. Um, for 2021, it is now appraised at 46,980. Because this is a tax, uh, Mr. Franklin asked why we would want to sell them at 10. Um, this is a tax bid. Um, so we don't get the appraised value for tax bid properties. Um, typically, we just get them for um, a strike off value, which this is a lot less of a strike off value. Um, or council will decide, yeah, if this is a good price. Um, let's get this back on the tax roll. I I cannot speak for the county for the central appraisal district. I'm sorry, sir. According to Mr. East, um, sorry, Mr. Crowder, um, he said that he never received a response back from the school or the county on this bid for the 15,000. I rely on him to provide that information to me. Um, so since that has occurred, the bidder has asked to redo his bid at a lower bid. Well, please. Yes, um, I was asked if he pays the $10,000, that $10,000 will break it down between the court costs um, as well as the distribution that is listed on the analysis. And then it goes back on the tax roll um, to get property taxes in the future. Oh, yep. Okay, so Marilyn rejected. Okay. I heard Dan, but that's who I heard. Yeah. <laughs> next year we are treating this like it is a grant um so that is why we have to have a scoring committee um for the engineers as well as the admin who we did receive two bids for the admin um there's no required and uh, previously we had two participants from council whether that's the mayor and one council or that was two council I just can't have three council that creates a quorum. I, I do see on here that it's a two for one of the two council and you're not going to be part of the director of the city secretary and the city of 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 Okay. 
second that Carolyn first. Any other discussion? All in favor. Calvin 34, consideration and possible action on BMSF annexation agreement. That um, we are actually tabling um, due to some uh, communication with them during this time. We will bring that back at another day. We need a motion? No, sir. We're just tape, we're taking that off the agenda. The BMSF wasn't ready for us. So we we'll wait until they're ready for us. Okay. It will be on the agenda when they're ready for it. Item 35 discussion of possible action to the city council directing voting emissions for the new possible stages to set back requirements for non conforming lots. Mayor of Council, this, we have several non conforming lots uh, in the area. A lot of new ponds and one park. Um, those are mainly 50, 50 lot, uh, 50 foot frontage lots, for example. Um, and then when you have a, maybe a, like a 10 foot uh, setback on the back of the property as far as on the side as well, it doesn't leave a lot of room for, for uh, someone to situate a house on there. So we've had a lot of problems uh, with, with uh, having to come back to the zoning board and, and council to uh, get uh, variances. Uh, so we're asking for all the non-conforming lots to reduce the setback by a certain amount. And I believe that we've lost about five. Yes. We're just really at this point, Mayor Council, we recognize uh, that certain issues routinely go before the zoning board. Uh, one of the things when we adopted the new subdivision ordinance by widening the lot requirements of 75 feet, we created a bunch of non conforming lots. We talked about kind of carving those non conforming lots and setting a different set of standards for them. We didn't, uh, but as we proceeded along, we've noticed that most people can't do anything for building on those smaller lots. So we would like your permission to bring this issue to the zoning commission so that they can take a look at it, make a recommendation, and then y'all can. And decide whether or not we should uh, amend the zoning ordinance to deal with this non uh, Right now, the initial thought is again having an exception to the width requirements specifically for non conforming lots and set a different standard or different setback standard for those. That's the initial thought. Okay. With that explanation, um, Mayor, uh, I would like to go ahead and um, give the zoning commission. Um, Opportunity to review these possibilities for the non conforming lot. So they'll bring that back to us, right? Yes, okay. Yes, the lot over at least the lot where they um, the building. So the building came in, the building goes down to the other day back to the house. Yeah, it's mainly in the Glen Park area. They've got 50 foot lots and they have to keep coming with any variances. Um, from a 10 foot setback to a five foot setback. So, um, but to answer your question, Ms. Clay, um, yes, the zoning commission, there is public hearings. Um, the zoning commission has to meet, and then the city council has to do a public hearing um, before they can, uh, an ordinance can be approved. Chairman, you made the motion or the mayor? Mayor made the motion. motion. I have not heard a second. Okay, Mayor, I made the motion. Change the second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Okay, item 36 consider and possible action on payment of service provided by what is Resco electrician at the Forest Complex. Uh, I'm assuming the city manager will address this. Mayor Council, I, I was unaware of some invoices that were from prior years. Um, they were asking for payment. Resco, our vendor, was asking for payment on some work that was done shortly the week after uh, we had our uh, incident out of the park. So Resco did come in, they did do the work. Um, we apparently were, they were trying to build up for some lease of equipment. 
I spoke with Resco, and I said, hey, we don't have a contract with the council. We didn't negotiate a lease. I can't, I can't pay a lease. So he was, un, he was very understanding, and I apologize for not billing on time. He said that he's trying to take care of the problem and help the city out as soon as possible. And the idea was to the park running again, and have TYBA be able to play at the park. We had no rights at, at, at the park, and so Resco had come in to our rescue and had, uh, Provided their equipment as well as uh, their labor to get the, the lights working. They're also the ones that uh, told us we need to work because what we have out here is temporary, it's not going to work forever. Uh, and they, they were able to tell us where the flaws in the system. I uh, was a little surprised that the lighting system is still working. Uh, but we told them. Fourteen thousand dollars that should have been paid in eighteen. They never built it. They never invoiced. So they're at, they're asking for payment. I wanted to bring it to you, bring it to you, so everybody was aware of it. I asked them to remove the the uh, leasing of equipment. They were understanding of that. Uh, they were just asking to be paid for, for their labor and, and uh, installing the equipment. You know, they, once we re-engineer the, uh, the ballpark as part of the Harvey grant, that equipment is good. So we, we will take that equipment back. So we're not leaking it. So we're asking for uh, council to uh, allow for finance to go ahead and, and uh, cut uh, a payment for that. Uh, we, we did express that we need more I make a motion to move the new bank. Yeah. Now, the really, the only staff brought this back. Just, 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 Bobby, just to make sure we're in front of you. We are the gentleman. I second that. That you make right on. Yes. Marilyn seconded. All those in favor. Here, Jamie's going to second. Jamie seconded it. <laughs> okay, I'm 37. First, consideration of public license and disposal for a period. Oh, but man, man, I don't know. Oh, I thought you could. Okay, all of them in favor of this. I'm the guy with $15,000. But I just had a question. Okay. The electrical work. So, the electrical issue that we had before, even though I understand that was temporary, have those electrical issues been resolved? No, ma'am. They, they plan to be uh, resolved in the next uh, several months. HR Green is uh, doing the engineering, has completed the engineering on the work. So, Angela, do you know that? Yes, um, they, uh, yes, council approved to go out for bid um, last month on the uh, engineering portion of the Harvey bid. They are due to come back on May the I want to say the 25th, um, and uh, that will come back to council um, to be awarded early June so that we can get this project started. As we do have a um, concrete date of uh, January of 2022, um, that is the date that we have gotten extended by uh, Tina and FEMA. We're just waiting for you to Any other questions? We're going to agree to say it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm 37 consideration of possible action on this road or repair of you generated by the police department either by resolution of the city council to be pleased such as declaring certain personal property of the city to be homeless and delegating authority to the city manager to dispose. For this surplus property, PD, used generator, or to authorize staff to go out to bid on repair. Mayor Council, this item has already been on the agenda. It was a request for the council member to add it back on. And I agree that we need a resolution uh, to, to the generator itself. Uh, it is not within, it's actually behind the police station. 
I we've left it there basically from a management standpoint of an insurance policy in case the police station generator that we have within the original one uh, failed that we have the generator to fall back on. The problem with it is it's a 20 year old machine. We know that it's been very well taken care of. We have the log on it. It's a fine machine. It's, just, it's 20 years old. And so the return on investment as far as wiring that and hooking it in is roughly 180 to 100 thousand dollars. To purchase a new generator, you're looking at quarter of a million dollars. So we're kind of in that. We're, we're just we're on the fence on what we're going to do with this. And so the, the agenda is written in a way that we can either do the project or we can dispose of the project so we can continue to leave it there. That is correct. The original generator being used. It is functional at this time. Bobby, what happened to the 45.5? You know, I need to look and see. With the low bid, I guess that the high bid was 90,000. Okay. No, the value is the yes. So, but even though this is a 20 year old generator, it's got new parts in it. It's not the body of it, I guess, is 20 years old, but they sent it up today. This is a, a, a Exxon subsidiary. My understanding, it comes from a mud district, and municipal utility district. And they typically have more money than the city, oh, so so they they maintain their equipment very well. So they we know only that. got rid of it because they were going to one with a different kind of debt. That's the only reason why we upgraded it. And we were fortunate enough to find out about it and bring it to the city, which was a no brainer. It was five thousand dollars plus they gave us thirty five hundred dollars worth of fuel. Yeah. So basically, got it for free. So $45,000 to hook it up to me is a no brain and it's something good that we can have for our city or hurricane season coming up pretty quick. But Carolyn, you're spending how much? We don't know. We're, we're talking about a 20 year year rate and sitting out there over a year. We don't know what it's got to do. So you're going to blow good money out of to a 20 year old girl. No, I ain't going to blow it to that. I don't know.
being that it's coming from the digital utility district, I'm going to believe the information that I have in the blog world. The concern is with the age, I think that it will run. The question is, do we spend, and I'm sorry for the proposal now, amount, uh, do we spend the $45,000 or whatever it may be, $40,000 on the electrical? There was a lot of uh, the getting it hooked into the building is the real cost. And we, we're, kind of, we're kind of pondering the fact that we've got a 20 year old team, and then we also can't afford to really go out and get a brand new. Well, just like they do in the grants on the other items, there is no uh, grants available for hydrogen uh, generators. There, there have been grants out there in the past. I did ask uh, about that because I know that we looked at the generators maybe a couple of years ago, and I did ask that question. And a lot of those um, generator grants came through emergency uh, management. And at the time that I had, they did not have um, We can re explore that option and see uh, if we can find a better way to get on it um, with grant funds. I know with our grants, with our PDBs, I know that we didn't be doing hurricanes in the area, but uh, you know, the PDBs project, I think there are other priorities too that are all on our radar. That we want to get under and, and this is why I'm saying that that rescue uh, plan, the funds that they provided for that, this is why I'm saying that that fund should be used for things that were set as a priority. And a generator is something that we need as a priority because we have hurricane season coming up now, and we're going to be needing that. And I know that you've already put this in plan to do water power, but I just feel like this is still prioritized. And we did on, on the uh, recovery money that the coronavirus recovery. I feel like our priority number one is water power. And I wanted to make sure that we had the money available to do that water power first and foremost. Um, that may free up some money indirectly to, to get it generated. Um, I'd like to stick to the, the coronavirus money to be used for the water power we went to this project. It's a lot of paperwork. It's paperwork requires a lot of staffing hours and time. I feel like if that's just our priority. I know that that also frees up some bond money for allowing us to do the generator. So a lot of things on the water system that I want to take care of. But I do agree. We will want to see what we can find. Back to my question. We do have a functioning generator for the police. That, that is correct. It does okay. not, it does not uh, so no, we, no, no, we, no. we are wanting to spend forty five thousand dollars and it might work first. But what if we spend $45,000 for a backup generator? I'm pretty sure we won't get no water down in the year generator. So, I mean, would that be feasible to give taxpayers money? I mean, I'm kind of rolling the dice on my work and getting my number. Then again, if this is for a backup generator. It's not a backup. This is the generator. What kind of guarantees do you have that it's going to work when you spend the money? Yeah, I'm going to get a guarantee. But I'm not going to step out and play with taxpayers' money. If it was my money, I might step out and play with it. But on the taxpayers' money, I'm not going to step out and play with it. Oh my gosh, um, it's going to work. And my brother has worked out with the best that I like the motion that we spend $45,000 or whatever we need to spend to get this up and running at the police department and that we do not need that we use our extra self tax credit type part, not the, not the police safety money or the public safety. I'll second that and I'll 
also like to hand that when it passes, if it passes, I'd like to use that generator, this generator that we're going to be um, talking about here to be applied to the police department for full time use and make a second generator and to the state center or wherever uh, you may need uh, a second generator. I from my understanding, I'm sorry, the generator down there does not run the whole police station. And it's correct. And if we're in a bad storm and that uh, PD is going to become our command center, and we're all fed there so many times and all day, you know, and we only have a building that's only half maintained by a generator, uh, you know, all generators are going to be like command center. Yeah. Okay, I just want to clarify on your motion. The two thousand and four make it out of excess funds foul. That's what I'm saying. And I'll make the motion second. Any other discussion? I got one more comment. Forty five thousand, if we spent that money in the generator work, that would be great. But if we spend that kind of money, Twenty years in a we don't have any warrant. I mean, I just, I, I can't. I just don't see it for me. You know, I think what we should be doing is, you know, with the the growth that we have, I think that we should look at some kind of way to try to purchase a new generator, something with a guarantee on. It. Something that we know that 10 years from now that it's going to be functioning. That's that's my thing. Why don't we just wait and do it right? Uh, uh, so the more we want to go, this is just to get it into the police station. It's not so sure that our thing's running because I feel like, Carolyn, you're going to spend more time. I think you're probably going to come back and go on the 20. I feel like you're going to spend $100,000 getting a 20 year old debt rate put in the police station. Just throwing good money after that. So, the question y'all got, I'm just asking them to look. Did they, uh, like, say that uh, they would supply the people to do this? So, I'm happy to do this. 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 I'm happy to do History, and I understand that it, it worked very well. It was on a, I believe it was on a replacement schedule for the mud and the reason for the utility district, and that was the only reason why they took place. Can we talk to those people that you brought I have, but you're still talking about a 20 year old generator. I don't care how good you make it. I don't care how much you make it. So my point is that I wasn't privy to all the information to talk to them. I mean, this was just, you know, appeared on the agenda. I don't know. I didn't know anything about the purchasing of the generator at all. I, I at, at the time, the city manager at the time was afraid that the generator would fail at the uh, at the police station. It basically it was an insurance policy. And at the time that it was purchased, it really wasn't thought out to having it connected in the building, and that, that was kind of the cost. And so, you know, kudos for you know making sure that we got it for nearly nothing. Uh, it's an insurance policy. These, the police, the the original generator, uh, failed to function, so we could plug in. But I think the engineer, the electrical cost. Was something that really wasn't factored into. Yeah. So we can guarantee you this is going to cost $45. Now, what is that? How much do we say? How much do we say the electric or the work was going to cost out of the ballpark? Did we start out at one price and then then how much is that to work? Oh, the, the actual electrical is much higher than that. I want to say like How much did they say it was going to cost initially? Um, our FEMA grant initially was $1,000. Yeah. 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 Y
initially covered all the repairs um, was for close to nine hundred thousand um, dollars. We did most of the work, um, so I believe this one is, if I'm not mistaken, the bid that's going out is right between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you have a. I agree with that statement. I think it should be general, and I, I apologize for not getting it. No, I, I'm upset about it because it seems like any time that I put something up on the agenda or bring to somebody's attention that I'm blackballed or called out on, you may not. You have yeah. been. I, I want to let you Where is this coming from? Yeah, it's coming where, from where, is where is it coming from? I don't understand what you say. We voted on this in November. Well, this was his. Agenda, I did say he was the one that requested it, so his name was on that. So I did want to let you know that it was nothing personal, but usually when a council member specifically asks for something, I put it on there to show who asked for it so that the council doesn't wonder why it was on there. So just to let you know where that comes from, it's just Does that same thing happen with you, Terry? Do you ask for something to be on the agenda? I do agree being consistent, and I don't like calling somebody's name out. It, it, that's the form that we will go toward. I think council should be able to ask for something, and it's somewhat, it, it not be, you know, directed, it not specifically state the person that asked. If I want to put something on the agenda, I don't have a problem with saying I want to put it on the agenda. Right. And you can put 
I, I, I want to make sure I want to make sure that we go through the process, the democratic process. And if somebody has something they want to fill on the agenda, I don't want them to feel uh, that they are being outed or I just no, I just I think it's important. It's just kind of leave it as a council member. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If it costs more than forty five thousand dollars, that's because we've gone up since a year and a half or two years ago when we got it. So that's the current one. I don't have a problem with the spending of forty five thousand dollars. I know. I know. I know it's Do we have a word? So so David's you know thrown out the idea of not to exceed fifty thousand. Can we get a slide? I'm going to check it out. 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 I'm going to we just go back to the game. People often want to say, but I, think, I, I, I don't like getting shadow. So I think that we'll go look at it. The mural did. It's an excess of $50,000. We'll bring it back to the school. Okay. 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 okay, that's in the motion here. So yeah, we can do a great yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Any other discussion? All of the It's um, for discussion. Um, I think that um, we kind of wait a little bit too long to get back on this anyway. Um, but I don't agree with spending this excessive money for something that we're not sure is going to work. And I really wish that there was a way that we could go back and uh, at least have this inspected to see if it's going to work. Now, there was a lot of good points made before. If not to exceed a certain amount, I agree with that as well. Yeah, that, that unfortunately, it's, it's very difficult to tell if there's anything wrong with it. Right. Like that. No, so, no, if you're just no, dependent on a 20 year old machine to, to back up the things that you really need, that's the same thing. That's fine. I just don't like it. It's just like a hair. 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 Again, the motion. I think. Oh, I think. Oh, I think.
Everybody's in the room. That's good enough. Yes, recording. I am speeding this time. 